channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 162, find peak element. Before we get into it, just want to ask you guys to subscribe, it helps me grow the channel. Alright, a peak element is an element that is strictly greater than its neighbors. Given a zero indexed integer array nums, find a peak element and return its index. If the array contains multiple peaks, return the index of any of the peaks. You may imagine that nums of minus 1 equals to nums of n equals to minus infinity. In other words, an element is always considered to be strictly greater than a neighbor that is outside the array, and you must write an algorithm that runs in big O of log n time. So now that we read the question prompt, let's think about an example. And let's keep in mind that we need to find uh, an algorithm that runs in log n time. For example, and, and the reason this is important is because we can't do a naive solution. Let's say that you know our kind of thing looks like this. You know, any of these points would be a peak, right? Because these points are strictly greater than its neighbors, right? So let's define a peak to be you know an element uh, such that it's greater than its right uh, neighbor. And it's also going to be greater than its left neighbor, right? So that's our definition for a, you know, a peak element, right? So what we could do if we weren't bound by this restriction is to just go through the array from left to right and try every single element and see whether or not it's greater than its left and its right. And if we do, then we can simply exit out. But Obviously, that's going to take big O of n time because the last element could be our peak and that would be when we return. Therefore, we need to parse through the entire array. But we're told that we have to do this in log n time. So typically, when we want log n and we have an array, we have to do a binary search. But as you can see from this input here, we don't have a sorted array, right? Parts of it is sorted, but the rest of it isn't. And we can't just sort it because that would ruin the original order and then we wouldn't have the right index. So how can we do this? Well, let's think about what it means uh, for a peak to occur. Remember that a peak happens where an element is greater than you know its left neighbor and its right neighbor. So what we can do is we can actually use binary search here and be a little clever. So let's pick the middle element here and you know it's going to be three, right? Because this is the midpoint. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, is 3 a peak element, right? We want to check whether our element is a peak element. So is it greater than its left neighbor? It is. But is it greater than its right neighbor? It's not, right? Because we have, you know, 1. So if we imagine the y-axis here, we have like 1, 3, and 5, right? So the first point is going to be this 1. The second point is this 3. And the third point is our 5, right? So because this 3 is not greater than the 5 up here, uh, obviously this isn't a peak but what we notice here is that this is an increasing sequence and we know that a peak exists in this array there's no way for it not to exist so that means if that we're currently increasing all we need to do is keep going to the right and eventually we'll hit a peak somewhere because we'll have to come down at some point we know that there is an array, uh, so there is a peak here. So eventually we will find a point where the right is actually less than our current element and we'll find our peak. And we can actually do the exact same thing uh, the other way around. If we throw you know, our binary search kind of midpoint and we see that our current element, you know, its element before it was actually, um, oh sorry, we wanna go the other way. Uh, it's the item to its left was actually greater than it but the item to its right is less than and we're decreasing that means that we want to go to the left and eventually we're going to find a peak element and this is going to be true no matter how many peaks there are we can apply this logic so what we want to do in our binary search is we're going to use you know our standard left and right pointer we're going to calculate a midpoint right and we're going to check this midpoint to see check if it's a peak right we're simply going to check whether or not it's a um, you know greater than its left and greater than its right. If it is, then we found our peak. We don't have to go anymore. Otherwise, what we want to do is we want to see whether or not uh, we're in an increasing sequence. So we're going to see, OK, is the left item uh, less than the kind of midpoint item and less than the right item? 
So if we have this, then that means that we're part of an increasing sequence, which means that we want to go to the right. So we want to move our left midpoint to be whatever the mid plus one is. Uh, and we do mid plus one because obviously we've, already, we've just established that mid is not a peak. Otherwise, we must be in a decreasing sequence, which means that left was greater than mid, uh, which is greater than right. And in this case, we want to say that the right is now going to become mid minus one. So those are our three cases. Either we have a peak at whatever the index mid is, or given the values of left, right, uh, left, mid, and uh, sorry, this should be mid minus one, and this is mid plus one. Uh, basically, are those elements increasing sequence? Then we move left uh, to mid plus one. And then if we're in a decreasing sequence, we move right to be mid minus one. So if that's a little bit confusing, it's okay. Let's go to the code editor and actually type this out and we will see exactly how to do it. And we'll handle the edge case where actually the, the neighbor, um, uh, sorry, the, the element at the very end of the array is actually the peak uh, because we need to basically consider that anything to the left of our first element can be treated as minus infinity and then everything to the right can also be treated as minus infinity. So we'll take that into account uh, for the cases when you know the last element is actually the peak here. So that's enough blabbing. Let's go to the code editor and type this out. It's actually about 15 lines of code and really simple. We're back in the code editor. Let's write the code. So we know that we need to use a binary search and we're going to need to set up our left and our right pointers. So left is going to be set equal to zero and right is going to be set to be length of nums minus one, pretty standard binary search. Now we need to set up our while loop, which is gonna handle the actual binary search. So we're gonna say while left less than or equal to right. And in this case, we wanna use less than or equal to right because we are searching for the peak element index, which we know for sure exists in the array. Uh, in this problem, we know for sure that there will be a peak in here given the constraints of the problem. So we don't have to worry about not actually finding one. Therefore, when we do find the peak, we can simply return the index and we're not needing to like move uh, the left pointer or the right pointer down and then return them. We can simply return the index because we know it's going to exist. Uh, in other problems where you basically need to move the left and the right pointer, then we typically return left or right. But in this case, we're just going to return, you know, our midpoint because we know that a, a peak must exist. So we're going to calculate our mid, which is just going to be uh, left plus right uh, divided by two. So that is going to be our, um, you know, the index of our midpoint. Now what we want to do is we want to basically get the value of the midpoint. So we're going to say mid is going to equal to, um, let's see, nums of, oops, we'll call this mid val is going to be nums of mid. And now remember, we need to compare the value of our mid val to its left and its right neighbor. So let's extract those. So we're going to say two left is going to be nums of mid minus one. But we need to be careful here because what happens when mid actually equals zero? In that case, we'll be trying to access the, you know, an element from the back of the array because in Python you can actually do, um, you know, minus indexing. So we won't get an index error here, but we'll actually end up parsing from the back of the array, which is not what we want. We just want to get basically what is the index of minus one. So in this case, what we want to say is if mid is actually greater than zero, we can do this extraction because we know that we won't accidentally wrap around. Otherwise, remember that nums of minus one should be minus infinity. So we're going to say if mid uh, is greater than zero, then we can do the extraction as normal. But if we're on the left boundary, then we need to say that our mid to the left value is going to be float uh, minus infinity like the problem tells us. We're going to do the exact same thing for the right. So we're going to say to right is going to be nums of mid plus one. Now, obviously, we need to check whether or not we're at the right boundary. So we're going to say we're going to do nums of mid plus one if mid is actually less than the length of nums, uh, nums minus one. So basically, as long as we're not at the last element. Otherwise, if we are at the last element, then we know from the problem statement that its neighbor is going to be minus infinity. So we set that accordingly. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to check our you know, three cases. The first case was that our current mid val 
or our current index mid is actually a peak value. So we're gonna say if, oops, if two left is less than our mid val, which is also, and our mid val is also greater than our two right value, then we can simply return mid because that is one of the peaks in the array. <coughs> cool. Now, remember that we could have an increasing sequence or a decreasing sequence. So let's do the increasing sequence first. So we're gonna say if two left is left less than mid val, which is less than two right, then we know that we have an increasing sequence. For example, if two left was one, mid val was three, and two right was five, like we saw in this example here, then we know that we wanna keep going higher because eventually we'll hit our peak. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say that left is going to equal, oops, sorry, left is going to equal to mid plus one, Otherwise, we know that we have the decreasing case, which means that um, we want to basically say that right is gonna be mid minus one. So that is gonna be the problem. Let's just submit this and cool, it works. So what is our time and space complexity here? Well, obviously the problem told us that our solution needs to run in log n time. So because we've implemented our binary search here, obviously the time is going to be log n. Space complexity wise, we have not really defined any variables other than our pointers for the left and right, which is just gonna be a constant space allocation. They're just integers. So it's going to be big O of one on the space. So that is how you solve find peak element. I think this is a really good uh, binary search question. It's relatively simple. Uh, it's constrained in the fact that you know that there's going to be a peak element in here. So you don't have to worry about not finding one. So it's a pretty standard binary search. Uh, you just have to basically see um, the little trick with the increasing and decreasing sequence. But once you see that, um, basically it's just a standard binary search. Uh, and yeah, there you go. So that's how you solve this question. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you wanna see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel and also leave in the comment section below which problems you want me to solve and I'll be happy to do those for you. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.